We are back with you answering your questions about unemployment and new jobs with Wake Forest University Law Professor Marie Amelie George and Guilford Works Executive Director Chris Rivera. All right, let's first foremost talk about the resources that are available just this week, Chris. Uh, Guilford Works has a virtual, not just a job fair, but a resource fair as well. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so uh, this coming Thursday, our organizations will be hosting a virtual resource fair and the purpose of that this this has been a really challenging month for our community you know with the ending of the $600 supplement um, eviction protections utility protections all coming to an end if they're not already to an end uh, we recognize that people are in need and so what we are doing is we are hosting this virtual event to get individuals in our community connected to those resources particularly around housing and utility assistance, health and wellness, food, clothing, training, and all of the like. And so individuals will be able to log in uh, on the 27th between uh, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. to visit various booths and get connected to those resources. Okay, so this is a virtual job fair, but it also is a virtual resource fair. Now, people can just do it on their devices, but they can also come to a specific location if they need a hotspot or they need a device to log on. That is correct. And so this particular event is only for community resources. We have another event happening the same day that is uh, around jobs, but this bounce back event is specifically for community resources and connecting individuals to those. Uh, individuals that do lack access to technology, whether that be uh, a PC and or internet, uh, they may visit one of our two career centers in Guilford County. We'll also be having a mobile career uh, center at the Renaissance Shops on Phillips Avenue. So individuals will be able to come up under a tent, access an ad iPad device, and navigate through the virtual event there. All right, we just had uh, full screen uh, graphics up there to show people what both of those events were, and you can find that in the Two Wants to Know section as well. Um, Marie Amelie, this person is asking, if you have been receiving benefits and your job opens up back part-time and offers you partial hours, will you lose benefits if you decline due to COVID issues at the job? There are a couple of issues embedded in that question. Uh, part of it is what is the COVID issue? Uh, if it's that you generally feel unsafe without anything else, um, that's not a basis for declining to go back to work. But if you have some kind of underlying condition that makes you more susceptible to COVID and your physician has told you that you should not return to work, then you can keep receiving benefits and not go back. I should also note that if you are working part-time, you might still be eligible for benefits or for a reduced amount of benefits, depending on how many hours you're working and how much you're earning. All right, because it is a sliding scale of sorts for them to figure that out. Um, this is a follow-up question to what we just talked about, Chris. The person is asking for virtual job fairs. Do employers accept resumes? Um, yes. So the virtual job fairs allows the applicant to engage with the or with the organization that is hiring. They can exchange email addresses to submit uh, resumes online. We're also doing a number of drive-through job fairs, and that simply is just an open-air space that employers are present to meet one-on-one -on -one in a very socially distanced, responsible way to talk about job opportunities. Um, we've hosted some employers that actually bring PCs on site, so if they're looking to move the individual to the next uh, phase, they present that app our uh, device to them to complete the online application, upload resumes, and then go through that whole hiring process at that point. Mm -hmm. It's a little different, but yet still very much the same. Okay. Yes. Uh, this person is texting, are all of the help unemployment payments taxed? Yes, unemployment benefits are income and they are subject to income tax. Mm -hmm. um, the next quick question, the three weeks of $300, how will it be paid directly to bank account, mail or debit card? I think that all depends on how you actually sign up for your unemployment benefits. That is correct. However, the normal disbursement has been set up. That's how it will be dispersed. Mm -hmm. And I should, uh, I just want to say that if you are just applying for benefits, you will get payments faster if you do direct deposit. So err on the side of signing up for direct deposit. Versus the debit card even. Mm-hmm. 
So direct deposit is the way to go if uh, we did have someone just say, I just got laid off, um, how do I apply for the benefits? You go on to the unemployment website and you will follow all of the prompts. And as you just said, for recommendation, apply for direct deposit and not for the debit or for the check. All right, our experts, we're coming to a close on this. We wanna thank you so much for your text questions. We wanna thank our experts as well for their time and their expertise.